What I'd like to do is very quickly just go ahead and actually solve the previous problem with the more circle approach so that we understand uh, the meaning of the directions that we calculated. I already commented on it and just be sure that the results that we obtain are actually uh, meaningful um, simply for the reason that the eigenvalue approach might be a little foreign to some of you. Um, so let's go ahead and remember what the stress state was. The stress state was uh, a state where we had a sigma x is equal to 100, sigma y is equal to minus 60, sigma z is equal to 40 MPa, and only tau xy is equal to 80, everything else is zero. So this is a state of plane stress with the, it's a state of generalized plane stress with the third direction, that special direction being the z direction. So I can go ahead and try the try to draw the more circle. And so if we do that, so that's sigma, that's tau. And I have to identify my points correctly. I am in the xy plane. So there will be an x point and a y point. The x point is sigma x minus tau xy, so 80 minus 80 and the y point is sigma y minus plus tau xy which is um, plus 80. So I can now immediately go ahead and put those on my map. So this is going to be 100 minus 80, let's say it's going to be over here. The other point, so that's the x point and the y point is going to be uh, at minus 60, 80, let's say at that point. This is the y point, minus 60, 80. So I would go ahead and draw the diagonal, okay, the dial for my more circle, and then I could draw the more circle. And that's how it's going to look. So here I would have the center. The center is 100 plus minus 60 divided by 2, so that's at 20. I can easily identify the radius. The radius is going to be, if I project this down here, this distance it is 80. So it is 80 squared plus that distance is also 80. So 80 squared, 80 squared times 2 square root, so the radius is approximately 113.1. Okay. Um, so notice that because, first of all, this is 80 and that is also 80, so this angle is twice theta n, which is apparently 45 degrees, and hence, theta n is equal to 22.5 degrees, which was essentially the direction cosine, or direct, the angle that was associated with the direction cosine of the first entry of the first principal uh, vector, okay, that we calculated in the previous um, method with the previous method. So my calculation was there correct. Of course here it would have been um, easier obtained but nevertheless the previous method is uh, a lot more general. We just applied it to a scenario that we are familiar with. So just to complete uh, we could of course go ahead and calculate the principal stresses. Sigma 1 is 20 plus that so it's 133.1. Sigma 2 um, is equal to minus 93.1. And well, how about the third principal stress? Well, the third principal stress is sigma z, which is equal to 40, which is going to lie somewhere there. So that is sigma 3 equals sigma z equals 40. So there will be two other principal stress, the more circles which lie, um, which lie, which are associated with the 3, 2, and the 3, 1. Uh, values, I'm not drawing those, but we've done everything essentially um, with the more circle that's equivalent to what we've done with the previous method. Again, the previous one is more uh, general. Now, that's one comment. Now, what I'd like to also very quickly comment on 
is the fact that the previous method is sometimes not as cumbersome as it looks. And actually, um, sometimes it might be very quick with cases that you actually cannot absolutely attack with the a more circular approach because it's not a state of generalized plane stress. Let me give you a very, very simple example. That simple example is a state of stress where it's all the normal stresses are equal to zero. And among the two shear stresses, let's say tau xy and tau xz are not equal to zero. Now, because I have two shear stresses which are not equal to zero, I don't have a state of generalized plane stress. The normal stresses are zero, but the fact that two of them are non-zero, it makes this case it, as, as a case that doesn't uh, pass as a state of generalized plane stress, um, or for that matter, automatically as a plane stress scenario. So I have to use the general method if I would like to eventually determine the uh, principal stresses and directions associated with the stress state. So let us say that tau xy is equal to a and tau xz is equal to b. So how would I go ahead and determine it? Well, uh, what you have to do is remember, if ultimately the way we do this is we have some direction cosines, a vector that identifies the normal to the plane, which is a unit vector. Okay, that's the constraint we impose. And the equation we're about to write is the equilibrium equation. So some of the forces along x, y, z directions, they are all zero. And we just need to go ahead and write the first the state of stress, which is zero, zero, zero on the diagonal. And tau x, y is equal to a, tau x, z is equal to b. And there is symmetry and everything else is simply zero. So this entry is zero, that entry is zero. But from the diagonal, I go ahead and subtract minus sigma. Okay, so zero minus sigma, zero minus sigma, zero minus sigma. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, calculate the determinant of this matrix and set it equal to zero. That's what I need from it. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate the determinant. Well, how do I do it? Well, the way I do it is, as I told you before, I would pick a um, row and assign values plus, minus, plus, alternating values, and then go ahead and calculate the corresponding um, submatrices. So first of all, there's going to be a minus sigma plus multiplying a submatrix, and then a minus a multiplying a submatrix, and then plus b multiplying a submatrix. And that those submatrices are the determinant of the submatrices. So the determinant of this is sigma squared minus zero, nothing to do. Determinant of that is minus a sigma minus zero. Okay, and the determinant of that is zero minus another minus, so it's a zero plus b sigma. Okay. So if you order this, so we're going to get a minus sigma cube plus sigma a squared and then plus sigma b squared. So after a moment's glitch, I continue. Um, so that's the determinant which I obtain, which I can recast as, so I have that equals therefore zero. So I'm going to take sigma outside and I'm going to write this as um, sigma multiplying, so minus sigma squared plus a certain value, or let me take the minus outside as well. So I'm going to have sigma squared minus a squared plus b squared, right? So I would get a minus cube and then plus sigma multiplying a squared plus sigma multiplying b squared. And hence, it seems that I have three roots. There is a sigma one, which is equal to zero, okay? 
and then there is a sigma 2 and sigma 3 which are equal to plus minus square root a square plus b squared and we're done right so I'm not determining the directions presently we could certainly do so but really the point here is to emphasize that the calculation is not always cumbersome it might sometimes be quite quick and moreover uh, that calculation is absolutely necessary in this case setting where we certainly do not have a state of generalized plane stress.